All right, this has to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I can't believe they let me in here, and I can't believe I found there are just boxes. Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray-Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40-year-old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. We are on the road today, taking a little bit of a pilgrimage to a place that I have wanted to go back to for some time. No, I take that back. A place that I have never been that I have wanted to go to for quite some time. We're heading up north of Dallas on our way to Oklahoma City and I've got a little bit of a detour in a little town called Denison, Texas. There is a tackle shop up there that, and I think it's actually a tackle shop gas station that has been on my radar for honestly a number of years. And all I've got to go on are a couple of things. First off, I've got this, which is an old outdated business card it says Dave's Ski and Tackle Incorporated. And it is on 4411 US Highway 75 North in Denison, Texas. Why do I have this card? Well, let's just say early in my retro bass and collecting days, I was searching for one particular lure from Cotton Cordell. I would dare say this is probably the most sought after lure from Cotton Cordell with the exception of the Fred C. Young Big O crankbaits. The lure that I'm talking about has a cult following in the saltwater community and I also think probably the freshwater striped bass community. And that lure is this, the blue striper from Cotton Cordell. <laughs> so I had been looking for this bait back when I lived in Maryland I thought this would be a great bait for schooling striped bass on the Severn and Magathy rivers. But it had been discontinued for a number of years and I could not find them. What it basically is, is a walking type bait. It's got a very interesting profile to it. And it is actually a sinking bait. So you can work this thing on the surface, it walks the dog, and upon the paws, it will sink down. I had been searching for this bait for a number of years and I found somehow through some internet search, Dave's Ski and Tackle. I contacted Dave and it turned out they had a few of these or maybe a lot of these in the back of the store. This was at this point, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. I ordered, what is this? It was a factory box of the Cotton Cordell Blue Striper. I've cracked a few of these and I definitely fish with these a pretty good bit. I always wondered if Dave's had any more models of the Cotton Cordell Blue Striper or a tackle shop that had a really rare discontinued bait like this. I wondered what else they might have. I've been living in Texas for a number of years now and I have yet to make it to this. For I lost the business card for a while to be honest with you. I finally found it and I just happened to be driving more or less right by this place. I looked it up on Facebook. It turns out that the tackle shop is still uh, up and running today. It's no longer called Dave, so I don't know what of the original store is left. But right now, as you can see, we made a little pit stop at Love's. I've got a, a fresh coffee, and we've got about two hours to get to this tackle shop. I don't know what we're gonna find. Honestly, I have not called ahead. Uh, Maybe this could be like the mother load of all cool old school tackle. Maybe all that's been cleaned out. I just don't know. 
but it has been on my own personal bucket list for quite a while. So I'll see you guys when we get to Denison. We're just pulling in to the destination. On my card, it said this place was called Dave's Ski and Tackle. It turns out the name has actually since changed to Lone Star Ski and Tackle. And it's just in North Texas, right on Lake Texoma. I stopped in and talked to the manager, Tanya, to ask if uh, A, I could film, and B, I wanted to see if she had ever heard of this bait, the Cotton Cordell Blue Striper. Unfortunately for us, uh, Tanya said that she'd never heard of the Blue Striper and that she didn't think that Dave had any of those left. Not a surprise that a decade or so later, an ultra rare, ultra sought after bait is not to be found. That's the bad news. The good news is I saw some pretty insane stuff on the rack and I also asked Tanya about Dave's tackle. I said, hey, and I don't know a ton about the backstory. Maybe I'll find a little bit more about the former owner. But I said, does he have any old vintage tackle maybe laying around in the back? Turns out he might. She said that there are, quote, some boxes of bombers in the back. So I have no idea what that means. It could be anything. So we're going to go ahead and take you guys into Lone Star Ski and Tackle Wish me luck. <laughs> oh, I'm pretty pumped. Here we go. So here we are inside of Lone Star Ski and Tackle. This side over here looks like it's a standard gas station. But behind me, check out all that tackle. There's a couple of things that I already saw on the rack that it might blow your mind a little bit. So here are some cotton cordels and huh. you know that looks like new packaging but I don't ever recall seeing a pencil popper that size. Look at that little thing. Oh wow. Ooh, those are really nice. That's like a little five inch jobber, huh? Compared to some of the more standard sizes. I have no idea what kind of fish they've got in Texoma, but I can only imagine some big stuff. Okay, so here's the first thing that I saw that <laughs> is gonna blow your mind. I recently discovered hunting around Lornet that Hedden reintroduced one of the most iconic baits of all time. Of course, I'm talking about the slope nose. This was one of just the, the classic Hedden baits that I've actually never seen in person. I've never fished it, but I see some right here. Check these out. Okay, so here are a full rack of Hedden slope nose baits in every color. Probably the most classic color for a head and slip nose is this. It almost fishes, I'm imagining, a lot like a Zara spook would. And what you can see with a slope nose is it's a standard sort of plug-shaped body, but it's got this really wild metal collar. The blue and white is by far the most classic color. But 
there are some other ones here that are pretty wild. Oh, check that thing out. I think that is called Perch. And you can really see that metal collar right there. You tell me that would not catch a bass. Here's one in sort of a clear bass color. It's another perch or bluegill color. I don't even know what that's called. Wow. Fire tiger. I mean, is this not just the most insane spread of retro baits? Oh, there's a frog. Look at that. Now that is 100% coming home with me. Here's a bone white with that red collar. That's a good looking bait too, isn't it? That is a classic spook color. Look at that. And there's a natural perch. Look at that pattern. That thing is awesome. Okay, those slope tails were pretty cool. Now it's time for, as they say, the juice. <sighs> so Tanya told me where to look, and um, <laughs> you're gonna get a laugh out of this. <sighs> I feel like I just snuck into the vault in Ocean's Eleven. Okay, so here we are in the back room of Lone Star Ski and Tackle. Tanya said to look for the dustiest boxes all the way in the back, and those are going to be home to the old school bombers. I have no idea what we're going to find here. Okay, so I'm looking around. I don't necessarily see any dusty box of bombers yet. I'm going to head down this aisle. <laughs> this place is trouble. They should not have let me in here. Oh my god. Oh my gosh. You're not going to believe this. This is... Alright, this has to be one of the coolest things I've ever seen. I can't believe they let me in here. And I can't believe I found there are just boxes of new in the package vintage baits. Alright, you got to see this stuff. Okay, so look, this is the bottom row here. These are boxes of original Cotton Cordell rattle spots. Oh my gosh, look at that. And that looks like a one ounce version. Oh my gosh, that is so vintage. Look, this is a full dealer box of Cotton Cordell rattle spots uh, C2311. Are you kidding me? Look at this, look at this. Yup, yeah buddy. Look at that, a whole box of those. Oh my gosh. Look guys, there's, there's boxes and boxes of rattles. Look at this. Oh my gosh. And look, more over here. There's more over here. What are these? Oh, more rattle spots. Oh my gosh. All right, this is, this is insane. If you recall that dealer box I showed you, I said I picked it up about a decade ago from Dave's and it was honestly just like this. So they must have had just tons of dealer boxes of, of baits that are still here. I can't believe that after all this time there are still vintage new in the package dealer boxes of stuff 
I'm gonna have to take a breath and go through this because I, I, I don't know what we're gonna find. Ooh, look at that color. It's like an old school blue shad. I, I can't believe this, guys. I mean, these days you, you just don't expect to go to a tackle shop in the middle of Texas and find <laughs> just boxes and boxes, dealer cases of discontinued baits. Ah, oh, so wild. Okay, so I'm gonna try to separate these. I see two different colors of Cordell rattle spots so far. Oh, and there's a nice black shad. Ah, oh, check that out. I mean, there could be a box of blue stripers in here for all I know. There really could be. Cordell rattle spot. I'm gonna go through every single one of these. As you can see, guys, there are plenty of giant rattle spots left on the rack. I'll drop all the information down below if you guys wanna to try to contact this place and grab these up. I mean, these aren't gonna last for another 10 years. I can promise you that. So I think I just discovered another little nook and cranny of some old boxes. <laughs> Check this out. And that is not, that is not something we've seen already. Oof. Okay. Check it out. That is something different. Cordell Redfin. Uh-oh, uh-oh, what is this? Bomber. Oh boy, don't don't you tell me. What are these? Oh, nice, check it out. Old school bomber slab spoons. Oh, and that classic old bomber. <laughs> yep, that is awesome. Okay, so this is another batch of stuff we're gonna have to go through to see what's in here. I might not make it to Oklahoma today. So it's gonna be tough to see with the lack of lighting in here, but this is a dealer box of vintage Cotton Cordell jointed red fins. I'm glad you guys came along for the journey today because I don't think you would have believed me if I just showed up at the studio with all of this stuff. Uh, another dealer box. We'll see what color these are. Gold. Oh. So these are five per box. And man, these are just, it's hard enough to find like just one of these baits, new old stock. It's harder to find a single dealer box, but to find boxes and boxes. And boxes and boxes. All right, Bass and Buds, so I'm gonna introduce you to your new best friend. This is Tanya here at Lone Star Ski and Tackle. You've actually got a lot of stuff still in the back. So was this all, so was Dave the old owner mm -hmm. of it? So yes. did he sell it to Lone Star? Cause it was, I, I just called up back when I lived in Maryland like a, a decade ago. Right, 
We did. We bought it all from him. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So they bought it all from them. The tackle shop is great. There's just a ton of stuff. You guys mostly service what, Lake Texoma? Correct. Okay, so are there stripers in there? Because you've yes. got a lot of striper stuff. Yes. Okay. But there's a boatload of new in the package, old school stuff back there. So I will drop Tanya's information down below. Um, you know, I'd get there quick because she's probably going to sell out of everything in the next month or two. So thank you, Tanya. Really appreciate it. Well, Bass and Buds, that was single-handedly probably the greatest haul that I've ever made in my lure picking career. It's not that there were a ton of different baits. Really, there were only three different varieties of, of old-school baits. The Cordell Super Spot, the Jointed Red Fin, and that Bomber Slab Spoon. But just to see the back room of an old tackle shop with... Just dealer box after dealer box. Um, that was pretty cool. So I will see you guys back at the studio. We'll take a closer look at some of the things that I picked up. I know the lighting in there probably was not um, ideal for, for filming. <sighs> so Bass and Buds, I'll see you back at the studio. We're back in Texas back in the studio and back with our haul from Lone Star Ski and Tackle or as it used to be called Dave's Ski and Tackle. I, I, I'm still kind of reeling a little bit about that whole trip. Again, pretty good haul um, but really I think what is so cool for me is that this entire trip started out with an online search over a decade ago and a business card. So here is the business card that Dave's Ski and Tackle sent me when I ordered this and I was trying to think about how long ago it was. It's gotta be at least 10 years, maybe even 15. But it was this, a dealer box of Cordell Blue Stripers. I showed you guys this in the car but it'll be probably a little bit easier to see here in the studio with, with proper lighting and such. So here is the package for a Cordell Blue Striper. Oh, it's kind of flopping around right there. This is a really cool bait and one that I'm gonna have to feature in a future episode for sure. I always kind of wondered whatever happened to Dave's ski and tackle. And it just so happened with that road trip we took up to Oklahoma City that I was gonna be going right past the location. It's pretty cool to think about what started out as an old beat up business card that I finally found and a four hour drive turned into a pretty memorable lore haul. I'm not gonna lie to you, when I was leaving Lone Star Bait and Tackle, the thought crossed my head to go ahead and buy up everything I could in that back room and maybe sell it online myself. But so much of, I think, what makes this channel cool and lure hunting cool in general is really the magic and the mystery of the hunt. And for that reason, in, even though it was definitely hard to walk away, aside from a couple boxes that I picked up from Lone Star Bait and Tackle, the rest of what you saw featured on this episode, it's still there. I will drop all of the information for Lone Star in the description of the video. So Bass and Buds, if you wanna get your hands on some of these old school goodies, head on over to Lone Star, reach out to them. I think I've put an email and a phone number in there as well. If you do end up with any of the gear, definitely let me know. I'd love to hear about it. and love to see if you went fishing with some of those old school baits. So until next time, happy hunting. And definitely, fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.